give it to me. What do you mean, like, on a USB stick? Uh, yeah. According to my cellular phone, it looks like it's going to take me until July 12, 2016. This week in game news, we're giving away a copy of SteamWorld Dig and its sort of sequel SteamWorld Heist, which has just been released on the PS4, Vita, and Steam. There have been a bunch of game announcements. Brian Altano said that the freshly announced Watch Dogs 2 looks like Zack Snyder's Splatoon, and I'm inclined to agree. The Minecraft 1.10 Frostburn update was released and brought polar bears, magma blocks, more diverse villages, and other features to the game. Iran has banned a video game based on its own history, but it looks like they won't be able to keep it banned forever. The 1.5 update brought football to cities, skylines. E3 is next week and is as good as guaranteed to be crazy, and we have this insane Overwatch video out of Korea of Genji Badminton. This is the Black Man and Robin game news update. Here at Black Man and Robin, we've got a special giveaway going on this week. You can get your hands on a copy of the fantastic SteamWorld Heist for PlayStation 4 or Vita. This one copy of the game has crossplay, meaning that once you've activated it, it'll run on both systems. To enter, you just have to follow us on social media, be it Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, whatever suits you. You only have to follow us on one. After that, give us your E3 2016 predictions. Now, your prediction doesn't have to be accurate. Though, if you say something absolutely bonkers and it winds up coming true, you'll likely win the contest. Entries for predictions are open until June 14, 2016, when E3 actually kicks off and all bets are off. That said, if you come up with a crazy prediction that doesn't come true, but sounds like it deserved to, you might also win. While entries for predictions remain open until June 14, that doesn't offer a whole lot of time to enter. That said, we do have another giveaway going. One for the game's fantastic predecessor, SteamWorld Dig. This Steam key will unlock the game for Mac, Windows, and Linux. In order to enter this giveaway, what you have to give us is a good reaction based on what you saw during E3 and why you feel the way that you do. Disappointed by the Microsoft conference? Excited to see that Datafly is somehow still alive, hoping that Final Fantasy XV somehow doesn't get cancelled? Whatever your reaction is, you can send it to us the same way that you would send a prediction. Through Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram. One thing that must be said is that we are open to creative entries. If you want to enter non-traditionally, maybe with a brief YouTube video instead of a comment, a satirical Twitter poll, a cleverly designed system of puzzles, hey, go for it. Just be sure to let us know what you've done. Our favorite predictions and reactions will be shared on next week's episode of Game News Update. Remember, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram as at Blackman and Robin. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Blackman and Robin Review. Speaking of E3 rumors and speculation, in an interview with the Financial Times, President and Global Chief Executive of Sony Entertainment, Andrew House, said that a high-end PS4 is in development and it will be more expensive than the current model of a PS4. During the past few months, there have been rumors of a PlayStation 4 Neo, which Sony is aiming at consumers with 4K televisions. This as good as confirms all those rumors. This is unsurprising as Sony has, many times in the past, released updated versions of their consoles. This isn't a totally new machine. This is just going to be one that supports games scaling up to higher resolutions. While it will have beefier hardware, it likely won't have any exclusive titles. The PlayStation 4 Neo will not be shown off at a 3 according to the interview. We'll likely have to wait for either Gamescom or Sony's annual PlayStation events. It seems that we probably won't be seeing any new hardware at E3 unless Microsoft decides to surprise us, as Nintendo has confirmed that they will not be showing off the NX during E3 either. The game 1979 Revolution, Black Friday, was released back in April for Mac and Windows. In this game, you play as Reza Shirazi, a photojournalist living in Iran during the uprising against the Shah. You're documenting the collapse of the country and you have to make some hard choices. It's a lot like a telltale game, but with actual history. The game's gotten great reception, has a lot of fans, and has won numerous awards. Unfortunately, the game is hard to obtain if you live in Iran. The government of Iran has banned the game, calling it anti-Iranian. 
Hassan Karimi, director of Iran's National Foundation for Computer Games, their board of censors essentially, claimed that the game does not have a large distributor and it has not been well received by gamers, which is a statement that's only half true. Yes, the game is independently produced and published, but it has been very well received by gamers. Karimi went on to claim that games like 1979 Revolution can poison the minds of the youth and young adults about their country by means of false and distorted information. This is completely unsurprising. The regime ruling Iran right now stands to lose power if its young people gain knowledge of history. Now, the news of this game being banned isn't entirely new. It was within 48 hours of the game's release that its sale on Steam was blocked by the government of Iran. The reason why we're talking about this today is because the game's iOS version just got a release date of June 16, 2016. The government of Iran won't be able to block a game on the App Store quite so easily as they can block one on Steam. Hopefully, the release of the mobile version of the game will be available to more people. If 1979 Revolution sounds like your sort of game, be sure to check it out. In happier news, Russia's Ministry of Sports has officially recognized eSports as a valid sporting discipline. I'll be frank, I'm not really into eSports. In much the same way, I'm not really into real-life sports. Watching people play games is, to me, a lot less exciting than actually playing the games. That said, I am happy for fans of eSports. If you think that only physical sports that require exertion deserve to be classified as such, keep in mind that Russia also considers chess to be a sport, and their country is home to some of the best chess players in the world. Right now is a great time to be developing a gameplay capture service. This week, developers poured four and a half million dollars worth of funding into Forge, a service that allows players to stream, record, and share brief clips of their games for free. The investment, led by True Ventures, brings total funding put into Forge to $9 million. The service has seen good growth in recent months and has big potential as a social platform. The thing is, there's no word on how it's to be monetized. There are no ads, and it doesn't cost anything to start using. How Forge will become profitable remains to be seen. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, you can download it for free from Forge.gg. In other game investment news, the Polish government is working in conjunction with the Witcher developer and publisher CD Projekt Red to create an investment fund for game development studios based in Poland. The fund is about $20.46 million and is offering money to developers making innovative game projects. Keep in mind, video games are a pretty big deal in Poland. In 2011, during a visit to the United States, Donald Tusk, who was then Prime Minister of Poland, presented Barack Obama with a copy of The Witcher. The great success of CD Projekt Red is quite clearly making inroads on Polish culture, and it'll be quite interesting to see the role that the game industry will play in the Polish economy in the future. While we're talking about CD Projekt Red, we don't know what they're coming to E3 with. We do know that they will be attending the show, and based on recent trademark leaks, it seems that they're bringing a fully fleshed out Gwent card game. They have confirmed that they will not be bringing Cyberpunk 2077, which was teased three years ago. What do you think they'll bring to the show? Let us know. In game releases this week, the most hotly anticipated parkour game of the year, Mirror's Edge, has been released on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Windows. It's a game that I, as a fan of the original, have been excited to play for a long time. Unfortunately, it's been met with middling reviews. The general consensus is that the game is generally decent, but has a lot of dead space in between the game's missions, and that much of the combat feels... wrong. I've heard complaints that the combat is kinda chaotic in a bad way. It feels like random chance when combat goes right, and it often breaks up the flow of the game, which is a problem seeing as the game is designed around parkour, free running, open, fast movements. What's worse is that the story is a clunky mess, and it has a bad tendency to get in the way of the game. There's too much story apparently splashed all over the place. A massive disappointment. I know that the story of the original game wasn't perfect either, but I rather enjoyed it. I suspect the story of this game would have been better if DICE hired Rihanna Pratchett, who penned the story in the original Mirror's Edge. In spite of the issues, however, Mirror's Edge Catalyst has garnered praise for its gorgeous visuals and soundtrack, as well as for having really strong moments that flow together nicely. Running from rooftop to rooftop, smacking crooked cops, and of course, for wall running between buildings. I've heard that it's really thrilling in some of the game's more finely crafted moments, 
but too often these feel like glimpses of how great Mirror's Edge Catalyst could have been. That's the critical consensus. From what I've been hearing from the fans, most of them who liked the original game seem to like Catalyst, which is where I'm largely basing my hope for this game now. Much like its predecessor, it would appear that Mirror's Edge Catalyst is both flawed and divisive. Personally, I still want to get my hands on it. Hopefully the story is not as bad as I've been hearing. In case you've never heard of Mirror's Edge, what you should know is that it's a first-person action adventure in which you play as a woman named Faith Connors. You live in a beautiful but dystopic city. It is filled to the brim with corruption and commercialism. As a runner, a member of a secret underground organization, you deliver illegal, politically subversive messages of hope. The RPG Celestian Tales Old North got some DLC this week, Howl of the Ravager. For some reason there is no trailer, just some screenshots and a bit of art, but what you should know about the base game is that it's a fantastic old-fashioned JRPG with a story about morality. I can't say much else due to spoilers, and that this DLC is a prequel that's gotten pretty good reception from players. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. 2D sandbox game Crea left early access on Steam this week. It looks a bit like Terraria in some aspects, though it's significantly more story-driven, with a focus on leveling up and acquiring skills. The game has gotten great reviews from its players and is currently available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. If you wished that Terraria had more of a story and progression system, you may want to check it out. If you're in the market for a new MMO, you might want to check out Wildstar, which was released on Steam this week. Regarded as one of the freshest MMOs in recent years, Wildstar has suffered from a dwindling player base. The last few years haven't been very kind to any MMOs, and Wildstar has been one of many victims of a changing market. It's currently free to play and available for Windows, so if you're looking for a sci-fi MMORPG with a great sense of humor and gorgeous aesthetic, check out Wildstar. Please, somebody check out poor Wildstar. For 3DS owners, Kirby Planet Robobot has been released on your handheld of choice. In this game, you play as Kirby, Nintendo's adorable pink overeater, and this time you're gearing up to defend the Planet Pop Star and kick bots in a mecha suit. I can't make this up. Using the titular Robobot armor suit, you can shapeshift into a jet or a sports car. Just like in previous games, you can still swallow your enemies and steal their abilities. In addition to its single-player campaign, Kirby Planet Robobot also has a local multiplayer mode for up to four people to cooperate and take down bosses. According to the game's press release, there are two additional multiplayer modes to unlock after beating the game, though Nintendo's refusing to say what they are. They want it to be a surprise. Thus far, I've heard pretty good things about Planet Robobot. Critics are saying that while the game is a bit easy, the level design is quite strong, and the mech suit adds to the tried-and-true Kirby gameplay. And now, for a brief word from our sponsor. Here's a dirty little secret. When you wash your face at the end of the day, you might only be cleaning the surface of your skin. To clear those congested pores, you need a deep clean. And today, you can get it with ProActive's incredible deep cleansing brush. And here's something even more incredible. You get the brush free when you order a ProActive system today. I love the deep cleansing brush because it really gets in those pores. I was using a brush that was over $200, and I like this so much better. This isn't just any brush. This is the only one from the doctors at ProActive, so it's specially designed for acne-prone skin. Call the number on your screen now to get America's number one acne brand for just $19.95. Be among the first 500 callers, and you'll also get the deep cleansing brush free, plus more secrets for flawless skin. That's a $93 value for just $19.95. You only have two hands, but you have a whole lot of bristles. This is such an incredible offer that supplies are limited. Call the number on your screen now. In crowdfunding news, a game that caught our eye last week is one called Transmission. If you watched our episode, you may have spotted its trailer. If you were listening to our podcast, which you can pick up on iTunes or Google Play, by the way, 
then I'll assume that you didn't see it. Either way, we're showing it again this week, but we're actually talking about it because its Kickstarter has gone live. In transmission, you wake up on a mysterious planet with no recollection of how you wound up there. You discover a mysterious, massive piece of obsidian that makes strange noises. In a lot of ways, I can't help but be reminded of The Swapper, a Metroidvania that was released a couple years back with a few similarities to Transmission. Transmission, however, looks to be more action-packed. It features dangerous aliens, a crafting system, and some survival elements. That said, much like The Swapper, it will feature some puzzles. The game really wears a lot of its classic sci-fi influences on its sleeve. It's clear to see inspiration from 2001 A Space Odyssey, System Shock, and Alien in this trailer. The developers also cite The Legend of Zelda, Ico, Blade Runner, and Gattaca as inspirations. Transmission is set to be released on Windows, Mac, and Linux December of 2017. If you're looking for a new coffee table book, might I suggest checking out Nintendo Entertainment System slash Famicom, a visual compendium, on Kickstarter? The book will be over 400 pages and serve as a sort of visual history of assorted NES games. The book is being created by Bitmap Books, which has released similar guides to games on the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, and Commodore Amiga. This project has been smashing through its stretch goals at a mad pace, if it hits its top goal of $175,000, it'll ship with a fancy lenticular slipcase. The book is set to be released January of 2017. Since E3 is coming up, this week we're talking game announcements. To kick us off, we got a first trailer for Injustice 2. The sequel to Injustice Gods Among Us, it's a fighting game starring your favorite DC Comics heroes. Superman, Batman, Supergirl, Aquaman, and others were featured in the trailer. The final game, inevitably, will feature more heroes than those, of course. Injustice 2 is coming to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in 2017. A new trailer was released for intellectual property, the video game. Lame joke? Definitely, but it's pretty fitting for this latest LEGO Dimensions trailer, which shows off the new characters coming to the game. The new Ghostbusters, Harry Potter, Scooby-Doo, Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Bizarro, Finn and Jake from Adventure Time, Mr. T, The Wicked Witch of the West, The Gremlin, all are present. LEGO Dimensions is a toys to life game in which your LEGO comes to life in the game. The game's been pretty well received and has been a real money printer for both the LEGO company and Warner Brothers Interactive. The game's upcoming expansions will bring these new characters as well as battle arenas for local competitive multiplayer. These expansions are set to be released a bit at a time through next summer. If you're fond of strategy games but own a console, good news. XCOM 2 was announced for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The game was well received when it was released on PC earlier this year. This week, we got a brief teaser for the console edition. Also on the topic of strategy games for consoles, Halo Wars 2 will be having its open beta from Monday, June 13th to June 20th. The news leaked through the Italian version of the Xbox Store. It was apparently supposed to be an E3 announcement. Good luck, Commander. An HD remaster of the oft-forgotten Final Fantasy XII is coming to the PlayStation 4 in 2017. Titled Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, the game brings improved graphics, new features such as a trial mode, remastered voice acting to fix the quality of that from the original game, which suffered in quality due to compression, a re-recorded soundtrack, and much more. In case you've never heard of Final Fantasy XII, what you should know is that it's regarded as one of the most underrated games in the Final Fantasy series. Released in 2006 for the PlayStation 2, the game was a breath of fresh air for the series, delivering a world and characters that were quintessential Final Fantasy, but at the same time unique in their style and presentation. The game received high marks from critics and plenty of praise from fans, but it didn't sell quite as well as Final Fantasy X. Set in the world of Iblis, the game puts you in the shoes of Van, 
a young fellow with aspirations of becoming a sky pilot. He teams up with Princess Ash, heir to the throne of Dalmasca, on a journey to free her country from the clutches of the Arcadian Empire. Personally, I'm looking forward to this remaster. I've not played Final Fantasy XII, much like many other people, but I have played some of its DS spin-off, Revenant Wings, and I'm already rather attached to the world. Will you be picking up Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age? Let us know. I'm a fan of Mike Biffle's Volume. Released last year for PC, PS4, and Vita, it's a stealth game set in a dystopic future in which you're pulling off heists to make a point about freedom, or rather, the lack thereof, in your supposedly modern country. It's a well-designed game, and it's getting a spin-off for the PlayStation VR called Volume Coda, which will be free to owners of the original game. It comes with a new protagonist, 30 fresh levels, and a new layer of story. The game will be available to demo at e frame. One of the prettiest games to be unveiled this week is called How We Soar, and it's coming to the PlayStation VR. I'll be honest, the first thing I thought of when I saw it was Ubisoft's upcoming game Eagle Flight. That game is set in Paris and has a much more realistic art style. That's not a bad thing for either game, of course. The game How We Soar, however, is in development by Crytek, and in it, you play as a paper phoenix flying through a world created by the mind and memories of an author. As you fly through this world, you'll paint some of its surfaces, bringing color to a world that has somehow lost it. There's no word on when How We Soar is coming out, but I can't help but be reminded of Okami. It doesn't have the same art style, but it's kind of similar in some aspects. Instead of the hand-painted ukiyo-e look, it looks like they've gone for paper craft, kind of, not exactly origami, more of kirikami, that is, cut paper. I really like the look of it. I love the premise, too. I mean, a virtual reality game in which you're flying around a big, beautiful world? Sign me right up. Finally, the game that I'm most excited for, Horizon Zero Dawn, got a new trailer this week that shows off some gameplay and more of the backstory. For the uninitiated, Horizon Zero Dawn is an upcoming PS4 exclusive in which you play as a woman named Aloy, living in a post-apocalyptic world in which dinosaur robots roam the Earth. The game now has a release date of February 28, 2017. Well, that's it for this week's game news. For all the latest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Blackman and Robin. Follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own views, and don't forget to enter our giveaway for SteamWorld Heist.